you guys want to know how to make this delicious antipasta that I have here in front of me, stay tuned. I will show you exactly how to make this absolutely scrumptious antipasta salad. Okay, so I am back for another recipe today. Um, this recipe I absolutely love. There's no cooking involved in this, so um, this is going to be a series of things that you can do for uh, that summertime is coming up. It's um, this isn't hard, but it's a little bit of time consuming, uh, only because you have to roll the meat. Um, other than that basically this recipe is assembling today we are making an anapasta with a, um, a parmesan italian dressing uh, to go along with this so i'm sure you guys see what i got going on right now um, i'm going to just run down the ingredients like i do every recipe when i start one uh, i have a head of iceberg lettuce now i also have another um, head standing by because this is going to be a pretty big antipasta. Uh, I have three uh, on the vine ripe tomatoes. You can use whatever you want. Uh, cherry tomatoes works perfectly fine. Uh, any other kind of uh, uh, tomato will. You can use Roma tomatoes. Use just whatever your taste is. Okay, so let's move on. So I have some mozzarella cheese here. And what I did um, because I'm going to eat this over uh, probably a few days and this will keep good in your refrigerator for probably four days or so so if you're into eating an antipasta and you're making it for yourself or company and it doesn't get eaten you can uh, put this in the refrigerator and uh, eat this up within four days though so what I did is I bought a block of um, uh, of mozzarella cheese okay and what I did is I just cubed it you can just see how I cubed it now you can also if you're going to eat this that day that you make it you could put fresh mozzarella in this. There's nothing wrong with it. The only reason why I didn't do that is because I don't plan on eating this in the first day and I didn't want uh, the mozzarella uh, because it has a lot of moisture in it, you know, getting all through in the salad and making the lettuce actually wilt. So that's why I didn't do that. We have a red onion over here. Here I have some stuffed blue cheese olives. Uh, you, uh, Listen, this is a very versatile recipe like a lot of mine are. You don't have to put these. I just think that adds a little bit of uh, nice flavor. So we got stuffed blue cheese uh, olives here. We got some calamari olives over here. I have some, um, some pepperoni over here. Uh, the reason why this is not rolled like the rest of the meat is, is because my local deli that I went to sliced it just a little bit too thick and it won't... I can't believe it or not, it has to be thinner than that for pepperoni to roll. Uh, so I'm going to show you the next best thing to do uh, with pepperoni or something else that uh, you, you're unable to roll. Over here I rolled up, these are all quarter pounds except for the Capricola on the end. Um, quarter pound of provolone cheese that I rolled up. I got a quarter of a pound of um, Genoa salami. You can use hard salami if you want to, your choice. Uh, I do have some imported ham over here. It's very, very lean. It's just what I like, but you can use, again, whatever you like. And I have just a little bit of Capricola over here. I wasn't really happy with the, uh, with the Capricola, so I picked out what I thought was presentable. Um, you know, you'll see in the end why I, I don't want, uh, you know, why I need the meat to look good. And over here I got some black olives and, of course, Got to have pepperoncinis, right? Okay, so they're the ingredients that I use. We're going to get started with this recipe, and then we're going to move on to making the dressing. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually cut up my lettuce. Uh, I'm going to grab another knife. Um, so this is how I cut up my lettuce for an antipasto. Now, you can cut it in half if you want to. I just start from the end, and you'll, you'll see how simple this really is. So I'm just going to about that thick okay all of the layers are going to be about that thick so this is all we're going to do just like this 
that's probably it's probably the size of your thumb okay so this is what we're going to do we're just going to go through this just like this okay and because there's a lot here i'm just going to take a portion of it set it aside and i'm just going to work with the other portion okay so all as i do at this point is i just go the other way and i do another thumbs length on this side so it's pretty simple um you know and you'll see that the um you know, if you want to take it, turn it this way now, and just go straight down the center. And this will this will give you like a, some good bite-sized pieces, right? You can see, gives you good bite-sized pieces. Not too big, not too small. This is how I cut up my uh, my lettuce for my antipasto. You do this any way you want. Uh, you like bigger pieces, smaller pieces, eh, you don't have at it. Um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to cut down this way, cut down this way, this way, this way, this way. And instead of turning it, I'm just going to stand over here, and we're going to do it like that. So this is really how easy it is to cut up a head of lettuce, right? Okay. So I cut up that other little bit of lettuce, and I'm going to bring the platter over um, on how the platter I'm going to use to build this, and you'll see how how big this is. Um, I get real happy when I make this. This is something that I enjoy, uh, being Italian and all. Who doesn't like, I mean, who doesn't like antipasta? Okay, so I'm going to just push this aside. I'm going to try to keep everything in frame here for you guys um, so you can see exactly what I do. And let me get my platter one second. Okay, so there's the platter. You can see how big this is. Um, and this is what I'm going to build this salad on, this antipasta on, okay? So we're going to take all the lettuce that we just did right and we're going to break it up because some of it will stick together you know as you guys know um, I know what you're saying you're going to eat all this now well, maybe I'll share it maybe I'll give some of it away um, okay so this is the start of it a nice big bed of lettuce okay just like that Okay, whatever dish you use, you can use a, like a Reynolds, uh, you know, a Reynolds uh, foiled pan. Uh, you know, if you're bringing this, is where you can put it on ice, it'll stay nice and cold. All right, so this is the start of it. I'm going to clean up my cutting board, and I'll be right back with you guys. And we're going to start making this a masterpiece. I enjoy doing this, so be right back. Okay, so on to cutting up the, uh, the onion. Uh, again, you do this any way you want to. You want to chunk this. You want to dice this. That's fine. This is how this is how I do it. I just cut thin strips, just like this. And I always cut more than I need because I hate getting into a recipe and then finding out I need more. I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. So this is what I do. Look at how simple this is, right? And you'll see when this antipasta is done, you know, if you show the picture prior to making it, you'll be like, oh my God, that's so much work. Truly, it's not, okay? So we just cut our rounds, uh, a quarter of an inch or something like that, just like that. This is all we're doing, which gives you these nice little pieces. And this, I think, uh, looks very good on an antipasta. All right, so that's how you cut the onion up. Two steps, very simple, okay? We're gonna go on to the tomatoes now, all right? You can cut, again, you can cut these any way you want to. You wanna cut them thin? Cut them thin, by all means. Um, but here, here's how I do it, okay? I cut it in half, cut it in half again, and then I flip it over, and I just cut them into just wedges, basically. Now, if you have any of the white on it, just take it and cut it off, because I personally don't like eating that. Again, this recipe is definitely for presentation when it's done, so it might you might just take a little time and, and cut these off, okay? So now you have a nice, beautiful piece of tomato that's going to present itself very good at the end, okay? So I'm going to finish cutting up these tomatoes, and... Um, We'll just we'll be on to the next step. I'll see you in a second.
Okay, I have all of my tomatoes cut up. As you can see, I have all of my red onions cut up. So now I'm going to start cutting up the meat. Now, um, the only thing that I didn't roll, like I said before, was my pepperoni. So again, nothing special here, nothing big here. But what I, what I do is I just start from the edge, just cut maybe pinky, size of your pinky for the width. And I just, this is what I do. And this is only like, you can do this, listen, you can do this with, with your ham, you can do this with your provolone, you can do this with your salami, your capricola, whatever else. You know, you wanna put turkey in this, you know, hey, put turkey in it, right? It's your recipe, make this how you want to. Uh, this is just my favorite things that I put into it. All right, so then we just take this and we turn it, right? So we cut it this way, push it together, turn it this way, and then we're just gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna cut it the same exact way. Nothing changes here, okay? Now I may not use this again, like I say, because I always add a lot more than, uh, always cut up a lot more than what I actually need. Okay, so our pepperoni is now cut. Make that as thick as you want to. You don't have to make it that thin, that narrow. You want chunks, ch to make chunks. Listen, you can buy a stick of that also and just put chunks of it in or go to the deli and say, hey, can you slice me, you know, a piece of sandwich pepperoni that's, you know, two inches thick. Open up the blade all the way and just grab a big chunk of it like this and then just take it home and cube it up yourself. You can do that also. Uh, nothing wrong with that. All right, so now I'm going to bring in my rolled up provolone uh, and we're going to do that so see here this this is just a little bit different um, instead of doing the whole stack I usually do the whole stack at a time but for video purposes I'll show you guys uh, just break this down a little bit more so what I usually do is I take it like this and I just cut it on a bias just like that it does two things right it makes it look a little fancier you know, and uh, you have all different sizes in there, okay? So you can take the whole stack, just like that, and you can just cut it at a bias. I usually don't go any more than three along the uh, along the piece of cheese. It's always three for me. Uh, I think that's a good size bite, you know, when you're eating this. And we're gonna just keep doing, uh, we're just gonna keep doing the same thing, right? So here's the salami. We're going to go one crack there and one slice there. Push this up just like that. Like I said, if you guys want to do like chunks of it, feel free. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, same thing, same thing with the ham. All my stuff gets cut like this because sometimes you just like a big piece of uh, you know, a big piece of cold cut, you know, in one shot. And like I said, unfortunately, I was going to put more Capricola in it, but I didn't really like the way it looked. So I picked out the few pieces that I liked and we went with that. Okay. Um, over here, I only use two tomatoes in here, but use, use as many as you want to, but that's all I used. Okay. So this is it. Everything's cut up. We got our olives black olives, our pepperoncinis. We are now ready to assemble this. So I'm going to get all this stuff out of the way. I'm going to bring my salad back in or my lettuce that's cut up and bring all that back in. And I'm going to show you how I assemble this. And this is going to be like a postcard. It's going to be absolutely beautiful. I've done this so many times. All right, stand by guys. We are almost done with this and we're going to make the dressing too. Um, so yeah, hold on for that. We'll make the dressing and then we'll be back and we'll assemble this. Okay, so let's move on to making the dressing. Um, the dressing consists of, I'll run down the ingredients like I do in uh, all my recipes, and here we go. Um, over here we have uh, some Dijon mustard. Uh, we have a teaspoon of it. Um, over here we have um, some dried oregano. These are all dried products except for the parsley. Uh, the, this two teaspoons, two teaspoons of dried basil. We have two tablespoons of fresh chopped parsley, just a pinch of um, red pepper, 
We have a little bit of sugar just for some sweetness in this. You got about a half a tablespoon in here. And over here we have about a teaspoon of sea salt. Over here we got some fresh cracked pepper. We have some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, a third a cup of red wine, and one cup of olive oil. So the only other things that you guys don't see right now that's off camera is I have a canning jar and I have a bowl with a whisk on it. So let me bring those in and we will get rolling with this recipe. Okay, so here we go with this recipe. Uh, basically what we're doing here is all the ingredients I just ran down, we are going to put them in a bowl and we're going to whisk them till we emulsify this. It's very important that we emulsify it, we get a good emulsification. And that is basically how you make this dressing. It's very, very simple. Um, I forgot one tool. Hold on one second. I got to get a spatula. Okay, so I have my spatula. Okay, so here we go. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to, we're just going to dump these ingredients um, in the bowl, basically. And we're going to start with... Um, I guess it really doesn't matter what you start with, uh, as long as you emulsify it very well. So we're going to dump in a cup of olive oil. Just like that. Now, again, uh, this recipe, you can, if you want more red wine vinegar, at the end, after you taste it, you can absolutely put more of everything in here if it's not up to your liking. So we're going to dump in the red wine vinegar. We're going to dump in the red pepper flake. Remember, that's just a pinch, just, just for a little bit of heat. It's not too much. We're going to dump in the fresh parsley. We're going to dump in the fresh basil. The oregano. We're going to dump in the sugar. The sea salt. The fresh Parmesan cheese. And the reason why I needed my spatula. Uh, and we're going to put in a little bit of Dijon mustard. Okay. So I'm not going to um, mix that with a spatula. So, And then the only other thing I'm going to put in is I'm going to put in some fresh cracked pepper. This is open for discussion. It depends on how much that you want of this. You know, you can start out with roughly a quarter teaspoon. If you like it really peppery, then add more. Um, that's probably right there about a quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm going to end it there. And then we're just going to take this, see? And then we're just going to take this and we're just going to, we're going to just keep stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring and stirring until this gets all incorporated and emulsified. Let's just take a few seconds here, maybe a, maybe a minute of, of constant stirring. Got done stirring this up for a little while. I emulsified everything. Everything came together. Uh, you can see all of the ingredients that I put in it, the parsley, the basil, the cheese. Um, you know, if you guys want to add more into it, if you want some uh, more red wine vinegar, by all means, uh, add what you want to do. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put this into a measuring cup and then I'm going to pour it. Um, sorry about that. And then I'm going to pour it into a canning jar because this has to be number one refrigerated and when you use this it needs to be shooken up because there's a lot of there's a, a lot of ingredients so-called a lot of ingredients okay so then we're just going to take this this is the Italian dressing and you can see all the the goodies on the bottom there that is the reason why you need to shake this up okay so let me get this out of the way that didn't look real good and then we're just going to pour it into a canning jar. Simple as that. Uh, just like that. Okay. So this, guys, is what I use for my Italian dressing. And you can see, I'm sorry, there we go. You can see on the bottom all the ingredients. So it's very important when you get it shake it up just like that and now you have yourself an awesome dressing okay so I'm gonna get on with um, building an antipasta now for you guys um, this is going in the refrigerator and then we'll use this as the dressing 
All right, so as you can see, I have my <laughs> really big platter. It's probably, it's probably an 18 inch platter. It's absolutely massive. Uh, I have my, <laughs> my lettuce that was cut up uh, before in the video. And now we're gonna start assembling this. We're gonna start uh, uh, trying to make like one hell of a presentation here. Okay, so here we go. Um, this, is, this is how I would do it, but you could do this any way you want to, okay? Uh, nothing's right or wrong here. So this is how I'm gonna start doing this, right? And I do do this different, like a lot of times, like I won't do the same patterns, uh, you know, because, you know, I have to look at it if I'm bringing it somewhere. Uh, so I want to look at it sometimes differently. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of stupid, but you know, it is what it is. this and actually you know what we won't put we won't put another one in that looks pretty pretty balanced pretty even um, okay so uh, next we're going to um, we're going to add just a few and you can layer this if you want to too we're just going to add not many just a few just to see where we're at because remember you're you're at you're actually building this you're not just throwing things in here you're 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 doing everything for for a purpose okay all right so now we're going to we are going to use all the capricola because there's not much okay and if it untwists and it unwinds that's fine um not a big deal it makes it look a little bit more prettier a little bit more elegant okay we're going to take up some of this chopped up pepperoni all right Again, you don't have to get you don't have to get crazy you want to try to get a good balance of um, meat and um, lettuce you don't want to chew into just a whole bunch of meat you don't you really don't want a whole bunch of just lettuce either so okay so then remember we got different meats to put in here so all right so now we're going to grab the ham uh, and we're just going to start we're just gonna start placing this around. Just like this. Like I said, placement on, on these things is, uh, you know, it's kind of important if you have an imagination of placing things. Uh, th this will be a good recipe for you guys. All right, so here we have our salami. We're just gonna throw some salami. It, you know, it's almost like decorating a Christmas tree. Right, you're looking for the bare spots. Uh, that's actually a good way to uh, to say it. You don't want too much of one thing close together, right? You know, you wouldn't put uh, you know three blue Christmas balls uh, all clustered up together, right? So th this is nothing different. This is exactly what you're doing. So uh, you know that's the way that that's the way I see how this works. I don't know. Um, that's just how I do it. Okay, so the provolone now will go on next because it's white. We try to keep that. I try to keep that on top. All right. Try not to bury that because that'll give it a little contrast too, right? If the white is on top, you can see how it all, what I mean by like if you layer it, you know. You show up to a party with this, you probably make some new friends, you know? Okay, so, okay, so that's about good for right now. We can always top this off with the same ingredients later on as we keep we keep playing with this. All right, so we got our, our ham on here, we have our capricola on here, we have our salami on here, our provolone, our tomatoes, and our pepperoni. That's what we have on here right now, okay? So what we're gonna do is now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some, some mozzarella, or cubed mozzarella, All right? And again, it's nice, to, it's nice to cube this because you have things that are round, you have things that are different shapes, so now this is just adding different shapes into it, right? And you know, we all know you eat with your eyes sometimes, a lot of times, right? So the more delicious that you can make it, the better. That's how I am. Okay. So now we're going to take 
some of these great blue cheese, stuffed blue cheese olives uh, that are in olive oil. All right, so these are going to go on next. Again, you don't have to use everything that you purchased. You know, you put a few of them on there, and whoever the lucky person is that grabs one is in for a treat. That's how I see it. Okay. We'll throw a couple over here. I know you can't see over here, but we'll throw a couple over here. Throw one down there. All right, I think that looks pretty good. Next, we're going to throw on our Kalamati olives. This is going to give it some great contrast. Again, these are in olive oil as well. All right, just like this. If they got a little stem on them when you get them, just pull the stem off. You can see a little stem there. It's not a big deal. I enjoy everything that I cook and everything that I make, but this is one thing that uh, for some reason I've always taken a liking to it from many, many, many years back. So, okay, so our olives are on. Look at that. Is that gorgeous, right? Look at that. It's beautiful. Um, okay, now we're just going to go even a little bit deeper in color, and we're going to do, now we're going to spread some black olives around. Not much because you can see it's getting very olivey <laughs> at this point. So we're only going to throw just a few, just a few of them in here. Not much. We're not going to use a whole can, nothing like that. Maybe, you know, 15, 20 olives, you know. If you like olives, put a lot of olives in, right? Um, and then now we're going off to, so there, let me look at that, right? All right, so we're going to do our pepperoncinis, right? I think these are kind of like like these are kind of like the star of the show anyways the little pepperoncinis okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to tuck some pepperoncinis and you don't have to do every single tomato but if you kind of split it up a little bit just to give it some color so what i'm doing basically right now is i'm pushing the platter out right so we have our mound here and now i'm just kind of trying to extend it to the edge Just bringing it up that lip a little bit. That's all I'm doing. Restaurants will do that to make it appear a little bit bigger than it actually is. Okay, so look, right? And you can even take, you can even take a couple more right here. Look at this, right? You can take this and just put a few right here in the middle. Look at that, okay? So you just stand back a little bit, look at this, and and and, and ask yourself, does it need anything else? You know, does it need um, anything small? Um, and I think it does. I think now we could probably put just a few more uh, red onion on the top because we did bury a little bit of our, of our onion, which is completely fine, but, okay. All right. There we go. I don't think this needs anything else. Um, you put your homemade dressing on it that we made, and this will be absolutely fantastic. So I'm not gonna quite close the video yet, but what I am gonna do is I am gonna pick this up for you guys. Look at that. Ah, that my friends, is an antipasta. You, no denying that. That is an antipasta. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to serve this up in a little bit of a bowl and put some of our homemade dressings on. I'm going to close this video out. This is how I make my antipasta. So, all right, I'll be right back with you guys. Let me grab the dressing, clean some mess up here, and uh, let's break into this masterpiece. All right, so now I'm going to plate some of this salad up um, and I'm gonna uh, coat this with my uh, my my homemade dressing that we made earlier okay so I have the antipasta just off camera grab a tomato just like 
this. All right, like that. Look at that. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. And we're going to top it just like that with a peppercini. Okay, so and we have my my homemade Parmesan Italian dressing. We're going to top that with this. I'm give it a quick shake. Got to shake it up a lot because uh, there's a lot of ingredients in this. Okay. All right, and I'm just going to pour a little dressing just like that. Just like that. Oh. Okay. I'm going to set that aside. This is what I've been waiting for. Give this a taste, right? Get a little piece of salami in there. Get an olive in there. Okay. Oh. It's so good. Yeah, this is very good. I have this quite often, a couple times a year. All right. Every beer that makes this, if you guys choose to make it, awesome recipe. Have at it. Remember, put every single thing that you want in this salad. There is no right or wrong. Um, make that homemade dressing. It's super simple. You've seen how I make it. And until the next video, everybody be safe. Everybody be kind to each other. And I will see you in the next video. Salute.